and Arlene here, and this is episode five of Welcome to the Hobby. Uh, we may, we've covered a lot of information. So we far. have, but now we're getting into some fun stuff today. Modding. The, the actual modding of yes. the Nerf modding. Yes. So, <laughs> yes, so as with the previous episodes, I made notes, Arlene read them, and I have questions. questions. <laughs> existing platform and then you just build upon that okay. um, and in some cases it's even doing complete and total gut jobs on them where the only thing that you have left is basically the trigger and maybe the catch oh my lord and you've replaced everything else inside <laughs> or you've at least touched and modified stuff on the inside of it, it, it it's like the, the ship metaphor when you replace all the pieces is it, is it is it still the, sh the ship at this is. is it like is it still a ship at that point? Yes. Like <laughs> But well, I say that because like going back to when I had started modding, um, the long shot, the original Nerf long shot, was kind of like I guess you could say almost the gold standard of it. Okay. Because it was the only one at that time, and until the Elite line came out, the only and I I stand corrected the Nightfinder as well, but very smaller comparatively but every original nerf um, blaster that came out that was we started doing all this stuff to was what was called a reverse plunger which was instead of the plunger feeding into the plunger tube the air volume it was the plunger tube actually went over the plunger itself oh yeah that's okay what, yeah they don't make that anymore because it was god awful horrible. I was about to say, that doesn't sound particularly efficient. No, it was not because that's why when the original yellow nerf nerf uh, blasters yeah. those could only shoot like thirty five feet and then the nice new blue ones came out and you could get like twice the distance. <laughs> it's like yeah, quite quite a difference. Very big difference. Yeah. But at that time, the long shot was the only one that was a direct plunger that was big enough to command like power okay. uh, what we would do is we would wind up basically gutting the internals um, reinforcing everything to high heaven the bolt sled um, making pump grips for it because that was uh, double bolt action mm -hmm. uh, but the springs were so heavy that you literally had to prop, prop it up against your chest to pull back on it oh, yeah no thank you yeah so that's why we started making our own pump grips for them Okay. Um, we replaced, we, we started making the brass breeches for them. So, you know, so this way, instead of just the big plastic pieces that they had, it was more, um, more fitted brass pieces that would slide on top of each other, making a nice sealed breech for it. And you're able to get like way, way better performance out of it. Um, nowadays people still use brass because they'll swear by it. Um, for the most part, we have transitioned into using aluminum barrels for um, for the Nerf blasters. Okay. A lot of things are now all direct plunger, like almost no. If you see anything with a reverse plunger on it, that's old ancient technology. <laughs> <laughs> it's from the past. Yes. Uh, but okay, so that's where it yeah. started. So where would you then get these different components to then mod? Back in the day, it was just it was all hardware, all hardware store stuff. Okay. You would go to Home Depot for PVC and screws. Uh, you would go to um, like Ace Hardware or Menards or you know something a little bit more local, just because they had a better or true value because they had a better selection of it for replacement springs and um, and, so, and uh, like so, and like the little the more little things yeah. like the bigger stuff you could find basically anywhere but for like the more specific things it was usually the more 
local hardware stores were a bit better fine on it. So that's the, the true homemade kind yes. of modifications. Yes, and then there was actually just building your own. Uh, like my plus bow, which I have featured several times on the channel. Everything from there is from a hardware store because it's wood, Delrin, um, acrylic, s a spring, screws, and that's really it. Like my hat. Just literally just the darts are. Yeah, and then and then make your own darts, which is foam backer rod, hot glue, a number six washer, and a felt pad. <laughs> that is really cool to think that you could really just create your own. Yeah. From scratch, that's very interesting. Yeah, and then with the advent of the 3D printer, I mean, uh, the 3D printer honestly changed everything. Oh, yeah. Because homemade, instead of, you know, being made out of acrylic and wood and PVC, are now... That you need to, you know, take the time to really make sure you get the measurements right. And right. And really file it down to the correct shape yeah. and everything. And make sure that everything just customly fits into each other. Yeah. And now you can just put it into a computer. And out it comes in this lightweight. Yeah. You know. Um, I mean, you still need hardware pieces to put everything together. But it's a, um, it's a lot easier, to, I guess, to yeah. control the shape. That yeah, you and come I, up. I have examples of a good kill. We'll go through those. Yes. <laughs> so, but yeah, and especially now with the with the hobby gaining so much traction and speed and being around for so long, there are companies that actually produce parts like this, like worker and other you know community uh run shops and such started making their own things and you know where originally it was nerf or nothing now it's well it's actually dart zone or nothing <laughs> but even dart zones like hit, hit a few speed bumps you know i'm not going to say dart zones perfect but you know they've hit their speed bumps but i mean like there are so many options outside of just nerf now okay so so Yes, you can now go to these places like outside the hardware store to get these individual components. Do they come as like a standardized kit where you can get more than one thing at once just to, for those of us that are new, um, just to kind of get a feel for how it all works instead of one component at a time getting, I guess, a bundle, if you will, for different modifications? Depending on where you get them from is depending on like how you figure you can source things. Like a lot of shops that do 3D printed blasters will have print kits, full build kits and sometimes will just have hardware kits. Okay. So if you buy like the STL files and like if you have your own printer, you can print out all the pieces yourself, but then you're like, well, now what do I put together? Um, that same person may have a hardware kit, so you will have all the screws, all the rods, all the springs that you oh, need wow. for it. Um, or they sometimes will have a parts list and be like, if you're going to just buy it yourself, this is what you need. That's so nice. and then you can kind of source them out yourself. Oh, that's great. Yeah, because I know for me, like I'm still kind of learning the internal every itty bitty little part in there. Right. It really does all need to work together just right. So it's yeah. good to know that they do provide kits that will give you the start yeah. to finish, if you will, for a mod. Yeah, and and like I said, you can even like kind of like wholesale. Like you can buy like fully completed, put together 3D printed blasters. Or you could buy the prints and the hardware kit and just build it yourself. So. Yeah. So to start with the simplest version of mods, what are what would you recommend as kind of your starting tools? Just so, so you can work your way up to those more well, complex and intricate customizable mods. Well, the base toolkit that you need is obviously a screwdriver. Um, Honestly, a pair of uh, snips or wire cutters, uh, usually the flush ones, mm -hmm. will work as if you have to like kind of like pick stuff out in a shell, like, you know, kind of clipping things out. That's a good way to do it. If you don't want to do on that, you can invest into a Dremel or a rotary tool. Um, would, a, would sandpaper work just, just sand, as well? Sandpaper, sandpaper works. I, I know in the past videos, and you guys have seen me, sandpaper is my least favorite part of the entire process, especially for when you're trying to do jobs you need to sand the entire thing yes and, and I, I, hate I, I I will say this um, just because this also flows into the rest of the stuff that we do like the prop making and cosplay sanding is a big part of everything it's so much so yeah it's just like a lot of stuff because whether it's your cl you clip something you're sanding down something so that's a little bit more flush or if you're sanding logos or anything like that off of the side of something mm -hmm. 
Sanding is a part. Sanding is just a part of anything that we actually do. It's so annoying. Yeah. It's so annoying, and the dust goes flying everywhere. Yes. Also, and that's another thing besides a besides like you know the tools, um, just some basic um, PPE is also recommended. Dust masks, um, if you can afford them, maybe a respirator. Um, I uh, some kind of eye protection. Um, Anything that would go up for us, anything that goes over glasses, yeah. uh, but definitely eye pro, um, you know, something to cover up so that you're not breathing in all that dust. Because believe me, <laughs> believe me, um, yeah, your body is not going to do well when your lungs are like half full of plastic dust. Yeah, no, that doesn't sound good. No, it doesn't sound great. So, all right, uh, and then along with the Dremels and stuff, I know we've used additional tools. To, yeah. Especially with the electronics. Yes, I mean that's again one. But. Once you realize you need something, um, you can always and this is a great tip from Adam Savage, yeah. which is you start off with, with the cheapest, right? Yeah, you start off with something cheap, but you know something that also works. Um, and you then know, once it breaks, you upgrade. Yeah, then you upgrade <laughs> from there because you know that you use it enough that oh, I need to invest in a proper tool that will last. Yeah. And I mean, like something like I a love soldering. That. I love that rule. So yeah, I mean, some, and something like a soldering iron. You're not going to need that unless you're really working on like electronic blasters, or you want to do something that has uh, the specifics of, you know, lights or sounds or something like that. Yeah. So. All right. So screwdriver, sandpaper, snips, Dremel or rotary tool, a little bit further down the line, yeah. along with pliers and maybe a soldering kit. Yeah. Okay. Just so we can have a shopping list. Yeah. <laughs> All right. It works. Awesome. So those are kind of the basics to kind of get started with it. Um, could you show us some examples? Uh, sure. So this is going to be the fun portion. <laughs> okay. So an example of just basically a straight cosmetic mod would be uh, this Saturn that I did. Excuse me. Um, for this, it's it does have an upgraded spring, so there is a little bit of an extra oomph into it. Um, but outside of the spring, uh, this is all cosmetic. It's uh, the paint on it is actually a uh, metallic flicker paint, or I'm not. It's it's, it's two tones, so like in one light it looks blue, and another light it looks purple, which is, is really that neat. Chrome? Uh, no. No. Uh, yeah, usually I see this. It's you labeled as duo chrome. So. Yeah, I, 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 it works best, I think, like with a, either with chrome underneath it or just black underneath it. Got it. Um, it's very pretty. Yes. Um, <laughs> the grip. Uh, the pump grip and the uh, stock on it were repainted, and then I did a bunch of additional handwork on it to just kind of give it that more wood look, as you can see there, as opposed to just the flat brown that it originally comes with. Um, another good tip for when you're doing uh, paint jobs is always a good base coat. And honestly, and this was one that I picked up from Coop ages ago, and that is the glory that is vinyl dye. Yes. It is an automotive paint. It is a little bit more expensive than your your standard rattle, but it's as, gonna last. As long as it works, it's gonna work. Uh, <laughs> but, it actually like I don't think you really have any chipping on any of your blasters that I've seen. Like if yeah. if it is, it's intentional weathering that you put on it. Yeah. And then another thing besides the, cos the just a straight cosmetic mod is a kit. Uh, so this was one that I had actually gotten from France Foamworks for the Villainator for the Adventure Force. I did paint it up and everything to make it, you know, fit my theme. Uh, but the only thing that like these additional pieces actually do is really just cosmetic because uh, the angled foregrip it still works exactly how it's supposed to uh, instead of the rail here it's uh, raised and I think is a little bit more um, suited for Picatinny or closer to Picatinny and then you have like the side rails it's a, just a mounting bracket so. oh okay sorry sorry I don't know things yet I'm still learning <laughs> uh, but like here you have a side rail here if you want to mount here you have another side rail which is just a dart holder uh, but yeah it's a 3d printed kit but again strictly cosmetic and Still somewhat functional, so. Somewhat functional. Yeah. <laughs> it, 
I just love that it holds so many darts. Yeah, it, it, it does help because even though it does have like a giant drum on it, when you're out, instead of trying to fumble the, with the drum, you can just pop those out and just shove those in there. Yes, sir. Um, <laughs> and then you have something a bit more extensive like my long shot. And this is the egg shot long shot, not the nerf long shot. But besides the cosmetic mod, I, I have better optics on here. Um, internally, a lot has been redone. Like, I have replaced the original acrylic uh, plunger tube with the aluminum one. I've replaced the front uh, pump grip with a angled foregrip. I, I have two, space, two 3D printed spacers in here uh, done by my friend uh, Chris Harper, along with a upgraded spring. And actually, if you do upgrade the spring, it might be a good idea to do those spacers because I had priming trouble with it originally, but the spacers took it away. Uh, I replaced the barrel on it so it has a much longer barrel to accommodate the increase in the spring, uh, the spring power for the, uh, the plunger velocity. And then up front here, I have a bearing scar barrel, which helps with my accuracy. Okay. It's okay. Once you make a mod to something like the spring, you do need to make additional modifications to other components just to kind of compensate for that change. So would you say the spring power versus the actual length of the barrel, is that something you need to keep in mind a lot? Yes. Um, are there other, I guess, neighboring or uh, catalyst parts that you also need to keep in mind when doing your mod? Um, Yes, if you're if you're doing um, an increase in uh, spring power, usually you then compensate that with adding barrel length because too much power with a short barrel, and your darts will not have enough travel to hit that good to hit their um, peak velocity. Okay. They'll come out too hot and then they'll like fishtail or they'll like go wild all over the place. Okay. Um, the scar barrels do help with that, and there are several types of scar barrels. There are the three straight 3D printed ones. Uh, there are the ones that use fishing line. Fishing line. Um, there are 3D printed ones that use fishing line that it's or injected molded. Um, now there's also the bearing scar, which uses um, wheels on ball bearings, or I, pretty, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah. That instead of the uh, the printed lines or the printed ridges or the fishing line imparting the spin, the bearings do that, but it also that sounds dangerous. <laughs> but it also but it also imparts a spin and it doesn't take as much um, power off of the shot because the bearings move a little yeah. faster. It just is able to impart that spin. Interesting. Yes. That's really cool. All right. So is that is that the only I guess case of a one mod requires an additional modification? I guess you could say that. Because okay. if, you're, if you're increasing the power, you have to then compensate that in some way or another. Because, yeah. um, again, the point of the barrels is to make sure that your dart hits, it's, it's I don't want to say right terminal right. velocity, but that, that peak velocity. Because yeah. if... Again, kind of going back to what we said before, where there is going to be a lot of edit, test, edit, test cycling. Right. Making your modifications. Right. And and you may even come across like when it comes to the X shot long shot, it's I don't want to say almost like an industry standard, but it's basically been community consensus that if you're going with a K twenty five or the Silver Fox um, Talon Claw the T C twenty five spring, your optimal barrel length is forty five centimeters. Oh, okay. All right, so now, having all that in mind, we have our parameters of kind of what, to, how do we, or where would you recommend we go for those types of kits and parts, and once we actually get into, this is what I want to do, how okay. do we move forward? Um, there are a bunch of, like, big name players within the community that a lot of people are trust and also frequent. Um, Containment Crew is one of them. Out of Darts, uh, Silver Fox. They not only have um, like hardware kits and parts and you know pro level blasters 
Um, but they also do carry um, other things as well, like accessories for blasters, um, extra magazines, that kind of thing. So you'd be able to find them from there. Uh, Worker is another good source where you can go direct to them and get like um, build kits for blasters that not only do they sell, but also will work with other existing platforms. Oh, that's nice. Um, and honestly, one of the probably greatest advents on the internet, Etsy. <laughs> there are a bunch of community members who have made um, little shops and big shops on Etsy, like Foamdemic being one of them. Uh, they are big, they're a big platform on um, Etsy. Uh, Rextex is another big one on Etsy. And then you can find, um, oh, Gavin Fuzzy. He's also, uh, you can find him on Etsy as well. Um, you know, there are a lot of places that will do, um, that have like small niche amounts of like the 3D printed stuff. Um, and also uh, things like AK Blaster Mods, which is on Etsy and has a retail website. Although surprisingly, their stuff on Etsy is cheaper than their retail site, so go that's figure. Inter- that's, I was going to say, that's interesting, because I know Etsy and its creators do have a bit of a tip right now with the amount of cost and fees to actually post on there. So that's interesting that, is, that it's even cheaper on Etsy. Yeah, it's it's really weird, because like, I've looked at stuff from AK Blaster Mods on their website, and it's like, oh, this 3D printed kit is like 60 or $65. I'm like, oh, okay. And then I happen to see it on their Etsy page, and it's like, oh, it's fifty-seven thirty-eight, and it's free shipping. And I'm like, like that, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. shop around. Nothing wrong with that. Yeah. And it, it seems like a, there are a lot of like DIY. And so I guess reach out to your local community. And yeah, even, I'm sure you'd be able to find either, even people with local printing and things like that. Yeah, like I and so, and even some shops will do custom prints for you. Like if you find an STL file that you really like but it's only an STL file you can always get that and then reach out to someone who you know in the community or one of the shops and be like hey I just got this STL file what would it be for you to print you know how much would it cost to print it yeah you know that kind of thing that's so cool so. I the, that's one of the things I'm very much looking forward kind of getting into this is mm-hmm. the community in general really does help out a lot yeah. and you know that's what also makes it fun Okay, and as mentioned with Etsy and the 3D prints and stuff like that, like I had said earlier, you could also get full blasters like this beautiful SBL that was uh, originally designed by Gavin Fuzzy, who you can find on Etsy. Um, and this was actually printed for me uh, by Foam Demic. Um, and again, phenomenal job. Like I said, you can get fully custom uh, prints on it. And the fun thing with the the print the 3D printed blasters is you can get them in any color you want. You don't have to paint them. That's very nice. So no, Less sanding, which you've already gone yeah, over. I'm not a fan of. <laughs> yeah, because, I mean, this is printed in my colors. I have all the all the tertiary stuff is done in red. Secondary is gray. The main is purple, which is how I tend to do things, you know. And it also, is very pretty. Yeah, and also you can get... Um, you know, when you speak with the the builder or something like that, you can then like kind of like work at how you want to actually get it built. Because like uh, when it comes to a spring, if you want this for HVZ, they have certain caps they have to get to. So if you need a weaker spring, you can get that. Um, if you want competitive or just like you know normal community stuff, um, if it happens to be high power, you get like the standard spring or the upgraded spring on it. So mod a mod. You're totally welcome to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Again, the whole point of modding is to make it your, not just make it your own, but be able to, you know, use it for the situation that you need it for. So. Yeah. Or in my case, it's going to be primarily for aesthetic purposes. I still want to be fun to use it. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. But yeah. Which, yeah. I believe that's everything that you at least had in your notes. Yes. Um, we didn't go, uh, now granted, we didn't go too much into um, the electronic side of uh, the mods, and I apologize that's, for that's that. A, that's a bit more advanced. It is It I, is a much more advanced thing, and even in all of my years, I really haven't dabbled too, too much into it, which is what I'm hoping to do in the future, um, is to get into more of that stuff. Like, I actually have a couple of flywheel stuff now, so it's, you know, it's something that 
I want to better myself at in the community. So if like I've reached out to friends about like, hey, I'm gonna work on this. What gauge should I use? What wheel should I get? What motor should I get? Because yeah. I, I mean, electronic devices are a whole different subject, and maybe we'll revisit that in a, another episode, future episode of Welcome to the Hobby or something. That's what I say. I, I wouldn't consider that a Welcome to the Hobby. That's once you get further down the line, you yeah. understand your space. I don't know. Maybe we'll come up with a sequel to the series and just go. All right, you're stuck now. What? <laughs> I think you know what? That's very appropriate. I'm yes. down for that. <laughs> yes, but so we've covered a lot over these last five episodes, and we hope it's all been very informative. But now we've come to something even, or I would say just as important because now that we have covered all of this stuff, so noob. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What would you like to do? Oh, uh, that's a very tough question. Um, I have thought about this quite a bit since, mm-hmm. since we started filming the series. I know, I de- again, keeping in mind what I like, what I don't like, all the different topics that we've kind of gone over, I definitely, I, I mentioned this before when we were going over the different types, I can't stand the, the wearing of the battery and flywheels. <laughs> so definitely a Springer. Yes. Definitely. Um, we do need to look for a body size that fits my frame, mm-hmm. as, as I'm going to put it, uh, and I guess when it comes to the modification point, I definitely at least want it to be easier for me to prime it, but there's something about a blaster that you get all that power. Yeah. Like, I remember I was little, it, this is going to show a little bit of my, my upbringing, I was middle of the woods, Connecticut, and we went to the turkey shoot. I was, I want to say seven or something. My dad puts the shotgun in my hand, so it's shooting the target. And yes, it almost dislocated my shoulder. But God, if that wasn't like, ooh, I like that the feeling. Thrill. The power. <laughs> um, so I obviously don't want the power to kick back. I don't think a Nerf Blaster even has the ability to do that. No, but, it's just more of the, the strain on your shoulder of trying to prime something. Yeah, exactly. So. Easier prime is definitely much preferred. I would love something with quite a bit of power behind it, though. So finding that balance, I know it's going to be very interesting mm-hmm. for us to go through. A lot of, like we said, test mod test over and over again. But yeah. that's kind of what I'm envisioning. I think I would prefer something, like I said, kind of a smaller frame. So if I could use it one-handed, that'd be great. But I think a top prime, more than okay. anything, is I think my go-to just because Okay. The variety of blasters that you have have shared with me. Okay, so we we have we have our our setting. Yes. Um, so now in regards to the mods. Yes. Um, if we can get something that's already pretty powerful, we don't have to worry about that. Are you thinking about doing any aesthetics to it? Oh, yes. But that I'm I've been doodling uh, at home. <laughs> I still haven't kind of nailed down my aesthetics just just yet. Okay. But we'll get there. Alright. I'll, I'll, I'll come prepared for next time. But All right. yeah. So the wheels have been turning. We'll put it that way. Okay. So then episode six of Welcome to the Hobby is going to be Arlene is going to pick her blaster. Yes. Um, Thankfully is, I have it. Yes. Thankfully I have you. I'm going to rely on you a lot. I'm probably going to send you a crap ton of links or ask for you for additional links. That's, to to, that's what I'm here for. Kind of sift through. Seriously, getting into this hobby, I feel like it's difficult to get in alone. Yeah. Reach out to the community. Ask yeah. for references. That you're going to be my main point of reference for all of this. But yeah, I think it's uh, it's going to be certainly interesting mm-hmm. diving into the shopping process. Yes. To so. at least get started. Yep. So. <laughs> That is our preview for the final episode of Welcome to the Hobby, is Arlene is going to be picking her own blaster, explaining to us why she picked it, um, what she may or may not do with it, yep. and then we're going to figure out what we're, how we're modding it up for her, and then, she, and then she'll be one of us. One what of us, us. One what of us. us. Yes. It's a cult, at the end of the day. <laughs> Everything's a cult, one way or another. Yes, it just depends on how brainwashed you want to get. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how far down this tunnel so. 
Hey everyone, Griever of the Future here, and I just wanted to give you all a quick little update in regards to what's going on with the Welcome to the Hobby series. Um, we are planning on finishing it. It is going to, the final episode of at least this iteration of it will be coming out probably closer to the summer. Uh, for what we have planned for it with Arlene and the blaster she has chosen, we're going to need some really nice weather, and as I am editing this... Um, it's still very wonky in regards to where things are. So just wanted to throw that out there. So I'm going to throw it back to past us to finish this off. I'm excited. Thank you very much for all of the wealth of knowledge. Yes. I never thought I'd be able to retain. <laughs> that's what this is for. It's so fun. So that's going to be it for this episode. And thank you very much for joining us. And as always, if you enjoyed the stuff we do here on the channel, please throw us a like and subscribe, leave a comment down below. Um, if you are new to the hobby, where are you kind of uh, leaning towards what you want out of it? Let us know in the comments down below. We love reading them all. And ooh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise you may not know when we're doing our silliness here on the channel. And we have a P.O. box, so if you would like to send us some snail mail, uh, letter writing is a lost art. You know, I just always like to point that out. But, again, thank you very much for joining us, and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Later.